we, we, we have this backwards in the body of Christ. Somehow, without Christianity comes out of Judaism, not the other way around. Amen? And, and you got to understand that the New Testament, when Christ was quoting, the, quoting and standing in the New Testament, quote, he was quoting the Old Testament. It was that the New Testament was not canonized till 400 years after Jesus Christ. So for people that say, Tom, I'm just a New Testament, say, okay, um, New Testament, you, everything come and came forth out of the Old Testament. Amen? So we what? And we also have to, you hear me say, study scripture in light of culture. So you see, the, any questions before I move on, is, is this is crystal clear? Or is it still a little muddy? Raise your hand. There's Bible studies. You can give her a microphone over there. We got a microphone. Green mic. Is it on? Hello? Okay. okay. Um, I can't really talk that good. But I understand everything. I just want to know why do some Jews agree with God being the Messiah, like some don't like God. I've seen him personally on TV. Because you go back when, 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 when Jesus Christ came and you go in the, New, in the New Testament, because when the Jews had went through so much, when they was looking for, when they said that he, a king, they was really looking for this elaborate king, because they were used to having kings and all of that. So that's what they was looking for. But when, when God came in the form of a man, lowly and humble, they missed him. And I was sharing this in the, um, with them in the story. you got to understand this. For over 6,000 years, you know, they was used to doing, you know how we can get stuck in doing something the same way? So you can sort of understand how they can miss him because now here it was. They had God. He did all this for them and everything. And then all of a sudden now you want to flip the script on me? You know how we don't like change, but they forgot that God said, we're going to look at that over in Romans uh, 4, that the whole, he came to Abraham, that the whole, that, listen, what I'm doing was just to set it up, because yes, you're the apple of my eye, but I'm using you to bless the whole entire nation. And so Jesus had to come on, the, he said, I didn't really, I didn't come the way to do with the law, Amen. But in order for all of us, God was not just concerned just about the children of Israel. He wanted an opportunity, and that's why Jesus Christ came, because all the killing of the bulls and all that, and we see how much the children of Israel kept messing up. I don't care how many bulls, lambs, all that. Amen. I mean, pretty soon we probably would, we would have all been vegans around here had not Christ came. You would, we would have been, been like the cows out there. Mm, ooh, this grass tastes real good. Because they would have been slaughtered up everything. Amen. Would be a, a pigeon in the sky, nothing. Else. What happened? Not even a little bug, a locust. Amen. So we got to praise the Lord. So that's what he, and that's the reason why he had to put the blinders on their eyes because coming against that spirit of, you know, what they was believing in was really hard for them. And so even still to this day, what we have, in, when we look at, and when we look at the Jews, most people don't know this, most Jewish people are secular because they had to hide who they were because they was persecuted. You're not persecuted as being a Christian. They are literally persecuted because of their, of their faith, They're, because they stand out. When you, you know, somebody can look at, I mean, first of all, all of us with all these tattoos and all this other stuff, nobody can really tell who Christians. But they literally, the Orthodox Jews, they are wrapped in their tallit up under their clothes. There, if you walk with their hats, they put the front, they're naked and not ashamed, and so they stand out. So people were going to know. And so some of them, as they got the new generation came in, they didn't want to be labeled with that. So some of them had to hide that. So either you got the Orthodox Jews, and then you have the conservative ones, and then you have a lot of them that are secular. That just, you know, because, they, because of all the torment that they had to go through in reference to being the children of God. And so they only going to read the really Orthodox Jews are only going to read the five, four books of the Bible. And so... That's why a lot of them would not come in until the end when most of us are out of here. That's a part of the prophecy because it's going to take, what, that 144 that he's going to, those, the ones he's going to pull, 12,000 from each one of those tribes. Like Pastor Adam's bloodline goes back to 
the prophet um, Zechariah. So each, every Jew comes from one of those 12 tribes. And so when we're grafted in, we belong to the tribe of Judah, okay? Unless you um, come from that, um, that actually li literally Jew is born. Did I answer that for you? And so that doesn't mean, though, that we have an opportunity to witness to the Jewish people. And one of the things you can say, listen, he was your God before he was mine. And that's how, that's sort of, that's sort of getting them like, you know what? Because I've had to witness, you know what, they, you're, 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 you're correct. And they understand the power when it comes to miracles and stuff like that. We struggle with that. They don't. Because remember, all with the, read only the first five books of the Bible, all you see is what? A God of what? A miracles. Even when they was fighting in the war uh, with Jerusalem and stuff and over the land, they had so many stories. Uh, when it, was, it was like these four men. It was down to the end, these the Jewish men. And they said, well, we just might as well. Let's just make our peace with God because there's only four of us left. And all of a sudden, a big army was coming, and they, the men were running off. And, and they're like, okay. Years, years later, one of the Muslim guys seen and now, you know, was older. And he says, I always wanted to know this. Who were those men that were with you? And he said, what men? He said, there was an army of men with you. He said, it was only four of us. He says, nah, 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 nah. There was an army of men with you. Those was the angels. That was the comfort. God always, just like it says, because the Jewish people are going to keep what? The feast. That you may try to come against them, but God's word says, I will bless those that bless you. I will curse those that curse you. That's why Pastor, I don't know if you're concerned about what people think or say. Because he know that falls on him. And I know because I'm married to him and I know that I'm grafted in. I really save people. Amen? You got to understand that. So when you understand your Jewish root system, you just be confident in who you are. You don't have to fight. Well, it said the Lord will fight your battles. How many times you read the Old Testament, the book of Chronicles and everything, they had to come up against the Philistine, and God used all types of miraculous ways. Hit something. Sometimes he told them to fight. Sometimes he said, just clam clamber some things together. Just shout to the Lord. Just walk around. Just walk around. What? He fought their battles for them. The prophet Elijah said, when they would say, oh, we're scared. There's so many out there. He says, Lord, open up my servant eyes so he can see there are more for us than against us. And when he looked out there, he seen angels with their swords drawn. And we got to understand that that you are never alone. You are never alone. You have, each one of us in this room, if you was to open, if, if God was open, you have an angel that's sitting right there by you. But we get so bent out of shape and think, we just, oh, I'm just going through, I'm going by. But they don't want to hear that. They want to hear you being, being empowered with the word, activate them in the, in the word. That's why Pastor Price has an awesome series about angels on the way. So you got some angels sitting around just fat. Because we ain't did nothing. They ain't give them nothing. We ain't said nothing. What? Because when we speak negative words, then all those negative words we speak, then that's how those demonic spirits enter into our lives. But when we speak the word of God, those angels got us. I was up last night. That's why my Facebook page got that warfare stuff on there. You can always tell what I'm doing at 2 o'clock. If I wake up before 2 o'clock, you're going to get a, a, a lesson on Facebook. Amen. Those angels was working last night. They ain't get, I wasn't sleeping, so they wasn't sleeping. <laughs> Hallelujah. Be the God. So by the time I woke up, listen, I had them took care of a whole bunch of stuff in the spirit realm. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. So you guys, so now you know you what? You're grafted in. That's a blessing. God loved us so much. Yes, the church of Israel would out for his eye, but he says, I want the rest of the world so much that you know what? I'm going to spirit, I'm going to blind them for such a time of this so I can get the whole world to have opportunity to bring them in. And I'm coming in the form of my son. I'm going to walk the earth. I'm going to experience the pain that you, that you felt. I'm going to go through some of the things that you, that you went through so that I, I can relate to you. We got to understand that triune God, the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Jesus was God in the flesh. So you say, God, you don't know how I feel. He looked and said, uh-uh. You forget. 
I came in the form of man. And that's why many a time I love this. And it, when Jesus called himself, he says, I'm the son of man. I'm the son of man. Son of the living God. And one of the, and another time I like, who you think it was when they entertained Abraham? When he, and Abraham knew he came. That was God that came. It wasn't the first time he had a, came on earth. That was God that showed up when he came and sat with Abraham. He's God. He can do whatever he wants to do. Hallelujah. Go ahead, daughter. You got a microphone? Mom, I wanted to iterate when you were speaking about um, when the Jews, you know, back then, Jesus had to come on the scene because no man could fulfill that law, living under the law. So, yes, even though back then they were, every time we turn around, they were slaughtering cows, whatever they were slaughtering. Man, I'm shocked that they didn't even go bankrupt. <laughs> I mean, on their animals because we as human, we always do something, you know. And so under that law, Jesus had to come and fulfill that law. And once he fulfilled that law. The sacrificial lamb. Yes. I mean, it, no more sacrifice because he was the sacrifice. And here's another thing that you ever you got to point out that when Jesus came, then they stopped. And many of them don't correlate that. That's, that, that's a sign and a wonder. If he, then why was they still, what caused them to stop sacrificing animals? And that time was because Jesus Christ now was born. Amen? Keep going. Verse 20. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. And thou standest by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear. For if God spared not the natural branches, take heed, lest he also spare not you. Yes, just stop right there. If we can get this. If he chastised the children of Israel, then who do you think you are? They are the apple of his eye. And if he chastised them, then who do you think you are? You got to understand that. And God says, well, I chasten those that I love. And he put the oh, everything that is there in the text. Because when you read those first five books of the Bible and you see the times that when Israel got in line with God, they were corrected. Some of them dropped dead on the spot. Thank God that he said, listen, they not getting this right. I, I got to come in the form of a man. I got to send my son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Because what? None of that in that flesh. We needed the ultimate sacrifice. That he made it easy where you can be able to come to him. There was no going ahead to have somebody to be in between. That's why, that's why they say the veil was ripped. So that now we have access to go to the God. We'll not have to go. That's why the Catholic religion don't work. And it said about you going, it, it's you, you go to the going to the priest. It says no man can come. To accept, they come through the Son, Jesus Christ. They didn't say through Mary and other angels, other saints that you done made up and all of that. Amen. Glory be to God. So, for if God spared not the natural branches, take heed lest ye also spare not thee. Behold, therefore, the goodness and severity of God on them which fail severity, but towards thee, goodness. If thou continue in his goodness, otherwise thou also shall be cut off. He said, don't be tripping. Don't get it twisted. Amen. Listen, you need to look at that Bible and say, listen, if it did not work for the children of Israel, it ain't going to work for me either. Amen. Verse 23. Go ahead, daughter. And they also, if they buy, bid not still in unbelief, shall be grafted in. For God is able to graft them in again. For if thou wert cut out of the olive tree, which is wild by nature, and wert grafted contrary to nature into a good olive tree, how much more shall these, 
which be the natural branches, be grafted into their own olive tree. So there's going to come a point in time that when they was broken off just for you to be there, now, now you see what they say, so why would you boast? That should be greater compassion because they was broken off so that you can be put there. And so God said, now the natural ones are supposed to be there. How much more it is going to be the greatest blessing that when the fullness of the Jews come into know the Messiah. Amen? Glory be to God. Keep going. Verse 25. For I would not, brethren, that ye should be ignorant of this mystery, lest ye should be wise in your own conceits, that blindness in part is happened to Israel, until the fullness of the Gentiles become in. That's a very important statement. I just told you that. You see how this is all lined up in Scripture? Blindness in part was done, and that's why we should have compassion. We're supposed to well, pray for the peace of Jerusalem until the fullness of the Gentiles come in. And in verse 26, says, And so all Israel shall be saved as it is written, there shall come out of Zion the deliverer and shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. So he, and think this, if God put the blindness on their eyes, God has a redemption plan for them. And we are supposed to be a part of that plan. We are experiencing their blessing. So let's not boast and let's not be a part of anti-sensitism talking about the Jews um, killed Jesus. That's a lie. Religion is what killed. He says, and furthermore, he says, no man took my life. I laid it down. He was God Almighty. If he wanted to just stop and say, you know what, I'm not going to do this thing, God. <laughs> yeah, that's it. I enjoy heaven much more. Figure out another plan. <laughs> but he says, not my will, but thy will be done. And G great is Jesus Christ that lives in you that at some times and point we get to a point in our life that we need to say, not, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Would a man or woman get to that point to say, not my will, Lord, but thy will be done? You overcome, you, you conquer, you rule, you walk in power and authority. But you just say, not my will, God. I may not understand it all, but let thy will be done. When will we get to a point and stop want to do what our flesh want to do. In this flesh, why you want to still be in your flesh dwell is no good thing. I don't understand. There have been some points of some time in my life, and I say, God, I don't understand this, but not my will. Let thy will be done. Because I know that you love me, and you say you'll hold no good thing away from me. And although I may have to go through some trials and tribulation, I know that God is working. James 1 said he's a perfect work, so I'll be lacking nothing. I'll be lacking nothing. And sometimes when we're going, the devil will try to have us to be focused more on that. But all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. The situation going on with my father, I can try to be saying, well, this is a man that exercised over 40 some years of his life. But I can tell you the countless of testimonies that have come through because of Jesse B. All the way, hallelujah, from Miami, Florida, and then on the streets and evangelism, people giving their life to Christ. And just today, I laid down because I was up and I said, I turned my, I knew I turned my phone off. Y'all know I'm going to turn my cell phone off. And I was going to turn the phone. I thought I had turned the phone off on the house line. And I needed to have a 1030 appointment and the house line rung. And as my routine said, you know God can do whatever it is he wanted to do. Because I thought I turned that phone off. And on the other end of that phone was a childhood friend that said, I need you to pray for me. But I got to, I, I, I got, I got to, I got to t tell you this one thing first. She says, I backslid. And I say, so what are you dealing with? She said, that gay spirit. Do you know what it was for her to pick up the phone to be able 
to share that with me and to say that with me. And I said, and was being able to ask her, I said, were you sexually abused? Were you, um, what would the door open at? And she began to break down and cry. She says, when I opened up to pastors, those were the ones that slept with me. Not a man, but a woman. what we're dealing with that's right now that's released throughout the earth is always going to be in the realm of sexual immorality. God can deal with everything. God will deal with all your mess, your junk, but when you're flowing in the realm of that sexual immorality, baby, you're dealing with Satan. That is a territorial spirit that's been released throughout the entire earth. Now, if you can have that door closed, and you may got some other stuff out of line with God, but you you still doing good. Yes, yes, you're doing yes. good. You say, yeah, I maybe ain't got, I maybe ain't got that right, but one thing, I got this door closed. This is on lockdown. <laughs> I maybe ain't there all the way, but I, I know one thing. I ain't got no interest on this way right here. Yeah, I may be still working on my attitude, and I may be still got some issues, but I got this on lockdown. I have accomplished that. Because that is the work of the flesh and abomination. Hallelujah. Oh, I just got some people set free. Some of y'all single people just got set free in the name of Jesus. Yeah, I got a bad attitude, God working on it. But baby, I got the other part locked down. That's good. That's good. Hallelujah. 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 Glory be to God. All things work together for the good of those that love the Lord. Glory be to God. And if, 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 and if that's what we will understand, hallelujah, and that's why back in the old days, at least they said, listen, I'm going to just go ahead and get married. <laughs> hallelujah. Because they knew, I, listen, I'm just going to go ahead and get married. I know he ain't worth nothing, but I'm just going to get married. So at least I ain't out of line with God in that area. I may catch hell in this marriage, but baby, my marriage, I ain't going to burn. <laughs> demons shoot at least stay on your knees I'll kill <laughs> I, I mean waiting for Mr. Right and, and all this and still fornicating or whatever just go ahead marry anything let God work on it if that's going to stop you from burning down in your flesh I don't care marry bring them in the church we'll clean them up I'm so tired of this sexual morality spirit in the name of Jesus. Listen, that's why back in the old day they would say, write a little note. You love me? You want to marry me? Okay, down the aisle we go. <laughs> Glory be to God. Y'all know I'm right. Had some daddies and granddaddy that was drunker than a skunk, but they was married. We, and all mama and grandma had to do but believe that one day he was going to get delivered. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Glory be to God. Move it right along. Where we at? Verse 27. Verse 27. Go right ahead. For this is my covenant unto them. When I shall take away their sins as concerning the gospel, they are enemies for your sakes. But as touching the election, they are beloved. For the Father's sake. Okay, let's stop right there. So when you hear people talking about coming against the children of Israel, what did he say? He said they are what? They, they are beloved yeah. for his sake. Yeah. They are the apple of his eye. Go ahead. For the gifts and the callings of God are without repentance. For as ye in times past have not believed God, yet have now obtained mercy through their unbelief. Verse 31. Do y'all understand that? Because of their unbelief, you've been, a, you've been blessed. Because of their unbelief, you've been blessed. And that scripture, they need to put an asterisk mark by it, so let me help you out. So when you see people got these gifts and their life's all messed up, you got to understand when it says, for gifts and callings of God are without repentance, what does that mean? God has given everyone gifts. You was born with them. He, and God does not take them back. Amen. So you got to understand, don't ever think that your gift 
amen, is gonna supposed to make you look special or what happened. You know somebody life jacked up? Amen. So here you is, you out there, and this, oh, and one of the women's supposed to be the pastor. But you got this in your in, in, in your life, and just because they out, God's not going to take the gift back, but you're supposed to have a discerning spirit. You're supposed to be able to know. We get, no, that's, that, that's what they call, take, and that's why I said don't take that strange fire into your bosom. Strange fire. That's what it is. You flowing in fornication, and you up there laying hands. That's why I don't let everybody lay hands. You go out here, these other churches and stuff like that, you don't know what you're getting. You don't know what they're doing behind closed doors. Hallelujah. You, 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 you got a house, and I'm talking to those on the web. You don't let nobody lay hands on you. If you got shepherd in your house and they marry the name of Jesus, amen, at least you know where it come from. Amen. And you know how sometimes, so, and, and then sometimes, you know, I taught y'all, y'all God, I'll take a Sunday, you know, they move so fast. You just, I, but you go to places that's on, I bind all transfer spirits in the name of Jesus. Yeah. Because you know, so, you know, you just got to know that. Hallelujah. Mom, when you uh, spoke on that, um, Clarence and I was looking at, was it phone where, uh, uh, is her name y uh, Yana? She's supposed to have these, these pastors. That, that are homosexuals. Yeah, supposed to be coming out on TV, and they're supposed to reveal it to their congregation sometime next week or something. And that's what I get to say, peace, <laughs> see ya, we don't want to be ya, goodbye. But you know what? going to be many that sit right there. Well, God's love. Yeah, but he don't love your sin. <laughs> but he don't love your sin. Amen. We, we got to have a stand. Either, listen, either you going to obey God. There is no, there is no, either you with, either right now in your life, either you with Satan or you with God. There's no in between road. Either you with Satan or you with God. There's no in between. There's no gray area. I don't care what it say, 50 shades of gray is on lie to you. Yes, yes. There is no 50 shades of gray in the eyesight of God. Hallelujah. Go ahead, daughter. Verse 31. Even so have these also now not believed, that through your mercy they also may obtain mercy. For God hath concluded them all in unbelief, that he might have mercy upon all. Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. For who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Or who hath first given to him, and it shall be recompensed unto him again? For of him, and through him, and to him are all things, to whom be glory forever. Amen. So you understand? that you was grafted in. So now, when whatever God spoke to Abraham, those promises belong to you. So now when you see the song, I'm a seed of Abraham, you have a full understanding why you are a seed of Abraham and how those promises, right, you have a right to those promises. Now let's go over here and I'm going to read from the message Bible because it flow better over in Romans 4. Amen. Yep, you got to recognize, baby, Israel is the root. You the branch. Hallelujah. The branch never bears the root. Even when you cut, I cut this off, I can cut my tree in my backyard and the, the root's still there. <laughs> Amen? Amen? You got to understand. Glory be to God. Where did you say something you said had stirred something up in me? You said about, you were talking about this. Yeah. 
And look at this piece here. This is another piece that I want us, this piece here. It says, verse 16, for if the first fruit be holy, then the lump is also holy. And if the root be holy, so are the branches. So when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, if you would just realize that when you walk down the aisle, that right at that point, it was credited unto you righteousness. Not because you did anything. That's what favor is. Un, that, that's undeserved. That grace of God is undeserved favor. If we will understand that you ain't have, that's the reason why in all these other religions, you got to, you bend over backwards, burn yourself, do this, do that. Not with God. Just accept the promise. And this is what it says, trust in God. I'm reading from the message Bible so it'll flow better. So how do we fit what we know of Abraham? Our first father in the faith. Until this new way of looking. If Abraham, by what he did for God, got God to approve him, he could certainly have taken credit for it. But the story we're given is a God story. How oh, there go that story, amen. Not an Abraham story. Huh? That's why God wants to get the glory from your story. Hallelujah. What we read in Scripture is Abraham entered into what God was doing for him. And that was the turning point. you got to enter in what God is doing for you. At some point, you got to make up your mind. that got to be your turning point that I'm just going to what? I'm just going to flow with God. I'm just going to trust God. Hallelujah. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Hallelujah. And you know how humbling that is? And when you submit to God, you say, God, I don't understand everything. Hallelujah. But not my will, but thy will be done. And if you and if you and if you was gonna try to, to mess up, God will step right in there. Because He see your childlike faith, He see your humility. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Even when you think that people are trying to make God will step in, he's not going to let people mess over you. He's not going to let people mess over you. He will reveal it. He'll take care of it. I'm a witness to it. Glory be to God. That's what we call, see, but trusting in God. It says, he trusted God to set him right instead of trying to be right on his own. <laughs> I'm going to say that again. He trusted God to set him right. That's a prayer right there. God set me right. Instead of trying to be right on his own. They say, you know what? Being wrong is strong. That's what we used to say. Being wrong is strong. It's just wrong is strong. If you are a hard worker and do a good job, you deserve your pay. We don't call our wages a gift. But if you see that the job is too big for you, that it's something only God can do, and you trust him to do it, hallelujah, you can never do it for yourself, no matter how hard and how long you work. Well, that trust in him to do it is what gets you set right with God. Hallelujah. It gets you to get set right with God. It says, by God, it is a sheer gift. It says, David confirmed this way of looking at it, saying that the one who trusts God to do the putting everything right without insisting on having a say in it. Uh oh. Uh oh. We don't, uh, we, right there, we all got to say, we don't have some ouch moments. God don't tell you, you what you put your, but, but God, wouldn't it look better doing it this way? But wouldn't it, that shouldn't they said it that way? Well, shouldn't they have not did that? He says, but put, he says, saying that the one who trusts God to do the putting everything right without assisting on having a say in it is the one fortunate man. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. Fortunate those whose crimes are carted off, whose sins are wiped clean from the slate. Fortunate the person against whom the Lord does not keep score. Do you think for a minute that this blessing is only pronounced over those of us who keep our 
religious ways and our circumcision? Or do you think it possible that the blessing could be given to those who never even heard of our ways, who were never brought up in the disciplines of God? We all agree, don't we, that it was by embracing what God did for him that Abraham was declared fit before God. All because what? He trusted God. Not because you know it all, but because you trusted God in all thy ways of knowledge. He said, trust in the Lord. In all thy ways of knowledge here, that he what? He shall what? Direct your path. Trust in God. See, that's a different thing to believe God than trust in God. Some of us can believe God, but you come to a whole nother level when it comes to trust. Oh, yeah, he had to teach me that one. Oh, yeah, he, he, he knocked me down a notch. Hallelujah. I remember, I never forget, that was a, 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 a homemade teaching right there. He says, Adrian, you believe in me. He says, but now I want to tell you something, there's a difference between you trust him in me. Hallelujah. We get that mixed up. We get that mixed up. You go into a whole nother realm when you begin to trust God. Hallelujah. Even when you don't see him, but you trust him. Hallelujah. Ah, uh, it says, now think, was the decoration made before or after he was marked by the covenant rite of circumcision. That's right. Before he was marked, that means that the, he underwent circumcision as an evidence and confirmation of what God had done long before to bring him into the acceptance standing with himself. An act of God he had embraced with his whole life. You got to, when God speaks, you got to accept it. You got to believe it at that point. You got to take it. You got to trust what he say. You got, if he says that you're going to be healed, then you got to accept that. You got, before you even see the healing, you got to say, I believe God and trust God that I'm going to be healed. If he said your children going to be saved, you run across in the scripture, that's a promise for God that your whole household going to be saved. Then you got, before you even see them little sap suckers walking in what God has called them to walk in, you got to trust what God said. Hallelujah. I found a little clip Juanita Byam, somebody had it, was playing today. Mother was talking about how her children, how even though she kept, she said, train them a child the way he should go. And she kept bringing it to church. She said, had Bible study. She'll make it. She said, she always had Juanita Byam. She said, you come here and sit down. She had five, five of them. And Juanita would say, well, I got to sit down. She said, because you one day going to go to the nation. We got to do what God say do. It says, and it means further that Abraham is father of all people who embrace what God does for them while they are still on the outs with God. Come on now. Come on, if you look back over your life, you were still on the outs with God. And God still was tugging on you. He was still tugging on you. I, 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 I was still in the nightclubs, but God was still, he was still working on me. Hallelujah. I didn't, even know, I didn't know nothing about his ways, but there was just something about that even though I was in a nightclub on Saturday night, that I was up at 6 a.m. calling my friend. They said, Angel, we just got in at 6 a.m. I said, well, we got to go to church. And look at, when you look on Facebook, you see, look at Deidre, Mark, and I now. Hallelujah. Didn't matter, hallelujah, that teacher had two churches, still finished school, and now she's a teacher. Hallelujah. We was all on the outs with God. Hallelujah. But God seen something in you. Glory be to God. Abraham is also, of course, the father of those who have undergone the religious rite of circumcision, not because of the ritual, but because they were willing to live in a risky faith embrace of God's action for them. The way Abraham lived long before he was marked by circumcision. The famous promise God gave Abraham that he, he and his children will possess the earth was not given because of something Abraham did or would do. It was based on God's decision to put everything together for him, which Abraham then entered when he what? Believed. If those who get what God gives them only get it by doing everything they are told to do and filling out all the right forms and properly signed that eliminates personal trust completely in terms of promising to an ironclad contract, that's not a holy promise. 
That's a business deal. <laughs> a contract drawn up by a hard-nosed lawyer and with plenty of fine print only makes sure that you will never be able to collect. But if there is no contract in the first place, simply a promise, and God's promise at that, you can't break it. God never breaks covenant. When God makes a covenant with you, it is ironclad. It will never be broken. That's the reason why the children of Israel are still standing right now to this day, because God made a covenant with a man named Abraham, and he said to him that the whole earth will be blessed through you. What has God, what promise has God said to you? This is why the fulfillment of God's promise depends entirely on trusting God and his way and then simply embracing him and what he does. God's promise arrives as a pure gift. That's the only way everyone can be sure to get, it, to get in on it. Those who keep the religious traditions and those who have never heard of them, for Abraham is the father of us all. He's the father of us all. Now you get an understanding why you can see I am a seed of Abraham and every promise that God said to Abraham, that promise is to you also. He is our, ra he is our racial father that's ready, that's reading the story backwards. He is our faith father. He did not know God. Abraham was building idols with his father. And God says, go to a place that I leave your kindred and go to where I am telling you to go to. Hallelujah. And we call Abraham father not because he got God's attention by living like a saint, but because God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Come on now. When you was a nobody, that's when God called you. Hallelujah. Told you God wants to get the glory from your story. What good of a story is it? If it and I said this the other day, what good of a story that sounds like, you know, I was a millionaire and I own my own business, and you started off that way. But the story sounds much better when you said I came from nothing. But God didn't know how I was going to make my way. They said I wasn't going to ever go to college. They said I wasn't going to mount up to anything. Ha. Ah. But God. And they say God made something out of Abraham when he was a nobody. Isn't that what we have all always read in Scripture? God saying to Abraham, I set you up as father of many people. Abraham was first named father and then became a father because he dared to trust God to do what only God could do. Raise the dead to life. And the word makes something out of nothing. Come on, the word of God will not return back to you void. Hallelujah. When everything was hopeless, Abraham believed anyway. What are you facing right now that looks hopeless to you? And God is telling you to believe. It is not faith if you see it. Hallelujah. Abraham believed anyway, decided to live not on the basis of what he saw he couldn't do, but on what God said he would do. What has God said he would do? What has God said he would do? What promise has God given you in his word? What, there are so many promises in the word of God, and we got to believe God. Let hope be an anchor for your soul. We got to believe God like never before, right in the midst of standing flat-footed with the devil when the devil is telling you that you're not going to live. You got to scream back at him, I shall live and declare the wonderful works of the Lord. <laughs> Glory to the Lamb of God. Abraham believed anyway, decided to live not on the basis of what he saw. He couldn't do but on what God said he would do. And so he was made father of a multitude of people. God himself said to him, you are going to have a big family, Abraham. And he started out with, look, uh, a wrinkled old body. And look, he got a big family. Sarah didn't thought she would ever have a child. 
hallelujah, giving those. She tried to, you know, when you try to get in there and make your own blessing because you don't want to wait on God, God said, no, my promise still is still going to come through. You could avoid those headaches, hallelujah, if you just would have waited on God. Come on, I know I'm preaching real good. You got some situations like that. You got some Sarah that was up in you when you didn't when You tried to make it happen on your own. And Abraham didn't focus on his own impotence and say it's hopeless. This hundred-year-old body could never father a child, nor did he survey Sarah's decades of infertility and give up. He didn't tiptoe around God's promise, asking cautiously skeptical questions. Come on, let's get rid of the skeptical questions. Let's stop asking God why and how you're going to do it and just accept God and his promise. What promise has God said to you? And you got to stop asking the why, the what, and the when, and just step and say, okay, God, I receive it. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. I cautiously, stop asking skeptical questions of God. He plugged into the promise and came up strong. Hallelujah. Plug into the promise and come out strong. Ready for God. Sure that God will make good on what he has said. That's why it is said Abraham was declared fit before God by trusting God to set him right. Tell God to set you in your right place in the name of Jesus. But it's not just Abraham. Here we go. It's not just Abraham. It's also us. Not just to Abraham, but also for us. The same thing gets said about us when we embrace and believe the one who brought Jesus to life when the conditions were equally hopeless. The sacrifice Jesus made for us, fit for God, set us right with God. Stand to your feet in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Set us right, Lord. Set us right. We want to embrace what God has said. Hallelujah. We not only believe God, but we trust God. Hallelujah. We're not just going to believe God, but we're going to trust God. When God said, if God said he's going to give you a child, then you're going to believe that God's going to give you a child despite what the doctor may have said in the name of Jesus. If God said he was going to make you the CEO of a company, then despite that you don't have no education, we just got to embrace what God has said. Hallelujah. Glory. So, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. We thank you that we have an understanding that we have been grafted in that we have an understanding that the promises that you spoke to the father of faith, Abraham, those same promises belong to us in the name of Jesus, Father. Father, forgive us when we have not believed. Forgive us when we did not trust in you in the name of Jesus. Forgive us, Father, when we have not walked in faith in the name of Jesus. Father, that so we don't have to be inferior, that because we have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, that every promise that you have spoken to Abraham, that promise belonged to us. And every promise that you have spoken in this book from the Old Testament to the New Testament, those promises are belong to us in the name of Jesus, Father. So we embrace what you have said. We thank you that you have put us in right standard and that you have put us in the right position in the name of Jesus, Father. And we magnify and we glorify your name in this place. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can we close out with the seed of Abraham? Now when you hear the seed of Abraham, hallelujah, some of you can put this back. It'll sound a little different. It'll mean much more to you in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we need everyone to sign a card. If you're leaving now, sign um, a card, birthday card for Nicholas. That's Parker's son. If we can sign that, we're going to get that mail to see Minister Margo right here in the front. Hallelujah. Yes, and you can go on Facebook, and you can tell Nicholas happy birthday on his Facebook page. Amen? Glory be to God.